Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In the past few months, we've created a few videos on Photometer, and since then, a few viewers have asked me to compare Photometer with another popular iOS Mac editing app called Darkroom. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. On the surface, Photometer and Darkroom are very similar apps. They are priced similarly, with Darkroom costing slightly more than Photometer on a subscription basis and slightly less lifetime. Both support all and are exclusive to Apple devices. They have the same standard set of tonal adjustments, which include exposure, shadows, highlights, etc. Both support local adjustments with AI masking, curves, selective color adjustments, and Apple Photos. With regards to Darkroom, as mentioned, it is a very popular app with an average rating of 4.7 out of 3,900 ratings. Excellent numbers to be sure. It is also a very innovative company. Back in April 2022, Darkroom upgraded its mobile and desktop app to include AI-powered masking, which would make it one of the first apps to have this feature. In November 2022, they rebuilt their five sliders, exposure, whites, highlights, shadows, and blacks to dramatically improve the recovery range, which they say are particularly powerful for raw editing. Moving on to Photometer, Photometer is equally as renowned as Darkroom, as its creators are the very popular Pixelmator. It is an average of 4.7 out of 285 ratings on the App Store. Interestingly, on almost the same time as Darkroom, Photometer, which was then called Pixelmator Photo, updated its app with improved shadows, highlights, clarity, and texture. In addition, on April 2023, almost a year after Darkroom, Photometer updated its app to include local adjustments with AI-powered masking. Even the updates look similar between Darkroom and Photometer. So as you can see on paper, Photometer and Darkroom are very similar, but paper specs don't always necessarily translate to real-world performance. So let's edit some photos to find out which raw editor is better. Let's start off testing basic global adjustments. First, with Photometer. Well, I'll be using the Mac app so we can see the results on the larger screen. The performance will be the same across all devices. We're going to work with this image, which was shot in the RAW format using an iPhone. In a photo like this, I like to start off fixing underexposure by using the exposure slider, as this will usually result with the best brightening effect revealing details without reducing contrast. As you do that though, the sky will overexpose. To counter this, I'll use the highlight slider. As you can see, despite the large adjustments, Photometer does a great job of maintaining strong overall detail and contrast and vivid color in the sky. Lesser editors would turn the whites into gray and have a multitude of unsightly artifacts. Next, I'll use the shadow slider to reveal a little bit more detail. I won't go too far as Photometer's shadow adjustment lacks precise targeting and will unfortunately hit the midtones, such as the blues in the sky. Finally, I'll enhance the midtone contrast using the texture slider. So here is the before and the after. A pretty solid result. So let's move on now to Darkroom. I'll use the same editing process and start off brightening the foreground with the exposure slider. Next, I'll use the highlight slider to lower the sky's brightness. As you can see here though, the highlight recovery performance is not as good as Photometer's. The blues of the sky have been turned into gray and a lot of details have been lost in the clouds. 
not the best result. So since exposure is not working, as we have hoped, I'll reduce the effect. As you can see, the highlight slider has a now more pleasing result without exposure. To fix the underexposure, let's rely on the shadow slider. As you can see, unlike Photometer, Darkroom's shadow slider does a good job of targeting just the shadows and not affecting the sky. Let's move the slider to maximum. Finally, let's use the clarity slider to bring out details and enhance mid-tone contrast. Here is Photometer's edit, and here is Darkroom's edit. So which one did I think was better? I'll let you know that at the end of the video. But before that, let's test out local adjustments and AI masking performance with our second raw image. Again, I'll start off with Photometer. Let's brighten this underexposed lady and make her stand out a little bit more. For that, I'll use the Select Subject AI Masking tool. As you can see, the lady was masked pretty accurately. I'll use the shadow slider to properly expose her. As I move the slider, you can see the excellent dynamic range of Photometer's local adjustments. Now let's use the Curves tool to enhance the contrast of the subject. As you can see, Photometer's Curves tool works with masked images without an issue. Notice as well that I can put handles anywhere on the curve and add as many handles as I want. Next, let's use the Shadow Slider to brighten the foreground. The subject is now a bit too bright. No problem, I can just tap on the subject layer and reduce the brightness accordingly. There, that's much better. Next, I'll enhance the contrast of the sky. I'll use Select Sky to automatically mask the sky. I'll adjust the sky's brightness, contrast, and clarity accordingly. Now let's zoom into the subject. Notice that since we made a drastic shadow adjustment, noise has become more visible. Thankfully, Photometer has a newly revamped AI denoise tool. I'll use that to reduce the noise. As you can see, it results in a much cleaner image. One final tool that is extremely useful is Photometer's Erase tool, which works great in removing subjects. Now let's move on to Darkroom. One nice thing about Darkroom's interface is it has a thumbnail strip, which is great for navigation. Let's get rid of it though to give more space to the image. Since I know the exposure adjustment does not give a great result, I'll brighten the foreground using the shadow slider. Next, just like with Photometer, I'll use Select Subject to brighten the lady. Unfortunately, Darkroom also masked the secondary person in the image. So how do you get rid of the mask? Well, unfortunately, with Darkroom, you can't. While Photometer allows you to add to or remove from a mask using a brush or some other tools, Darkroom doesn't have any mechanism nor does it have a brush of any kind. As a result, the precision of masks is limited in Darkroom. Nevertheless, let's accept the result and brighten the subject. Next, let's use the Curve tool to add contrast to the subject. As you can see, unlike in Photometer, the handles in Darkroom's Curves tool are fixed in both its position and its number. You can't add or remove handles in Darkroom. So it is a much more limited curves tool than Photometer's. But can it brighten just the subject? Alas, it can't. Unlike Photometer, which can work with masks, Darkroom's curves tool is limited to global adjustments only. Next, let's enhance the contrast of the sky. 
unlike Photomator, Darkroom's Select Sky is limited to Pro Raw images. At least that's my understanding. That being said, I never got to see a Select Sky option to show up, even after testing with Pro Raw images. So I'm not sure why that is so. However, as an alternative to Select Sky, Darkroom has an excellent luminance mask that can also be used to select a sky. There, that's a good result. Next, I'll enhance the sky with a clarity and contrast tool. Finally, in terms of limitations, unlike Photometer, Darkroom has no AI noise reduction nor any erase tool. So here is Photometer's edit and here is Darkroom's edit. So that was the editing demonstration. Which one did I think was better? I think it was pretty obvious. In terms of global adjustments, Photometer has better tone adjustments, colors are more natural and lifelike, and have greater dynamic range. In terms of local adjustments, the disparity is even greater. Photometer allows you to add or subtract from a mask with a brush or other AI tools. Darkroom has no such capability. In addition, the curves of Darkroom is pretty limited. Finally, Photometer also has AI denoise, object removal, file search, while Darkroom does not. So if this comparison sounds like a blowout, I do think it is. But such is the case in technology. One year, you're dominating the field. The next year, a new competitor comes up with better features and an overall better product, which I think Photometer is. So it's up for Darkroom to answer the call. I have no doubt Darkroom will be up to the challenge for 2024. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know which one you thought was the winner, Darkroom or Photometer. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.